one thing that I can say that I'm also not enjoying is the absolute non-movement, the zero non-movement around United and around what's going on with transfers and around what's going on with the sale and the overall takeover of the club. I know, you know, shock to you guys, I keep saying it all the time on here, my mental health is definitely on the brink with this lack of movement with a sale. It feels like the Glazers are somewhat trying to drag this out as long as possible to get as much dollars as they can out of the club and to also potentially, potentially push both bidders in Sir Jim Ratcliffe and Sheikh Jassim in a position where they have to submit a fourth and quote-unquote final bid that's what it's looking like to me at the moment this doesn't seem like owners who want to get out as soon as possible who want to ride out into the sunset with their millions stashed in their side bags no this looks like ownership who are adamant on squeezing every last inkling of money they can out of the club before they leave and for us as fans it's putting us in a really weird position because the summer transfer windows here and usually most fans should be excited and should be hyped about getting linked with players, about, you know, potential deals that are going to be put through, about scouting players online and looking at YouTube clips. That's what we should all be excited about as fans. We shouldn't be concerning ourselves with the old business of the club. That's what something I'm honestly hopeful when the new owners do buy the club, especially if it's going to be Sheikh Jassim in terms of the total takeover, I can't wait to get to a point as a United fan where I'm not discussing ownership. I'm not really getting into the weeds of who our football director is, sporting director is, all this stuff. I just want to be talking about the football on the pitch and about the tactics and about the team selections and about the formations and about the form play attributes that's the thing that i actually want to talk about because that's way more fun than getting to all that heady boardroom stuff that probably for the most part goes over most people's heads but with that being the case and with us being still owned by the glazers i have to say i'm quite annoyed about this news that we've signed mason mount number one i don't rate him anyway but number two i also think we shouldn't be signing anybody. I would go as far as saying we shouldn't be signing players or selling players in any way, shape or form until we get new owners. That's what I adamantly think because I think the sale of players is going to be influenced by who you can sign. So if Eric Ten Hag has been given assurances that he can go out and sign a certain caliber of player, he's going to sell a certain caliber of player. But if maybe he's told, hey, here are your remit, you can only sign players within this, you know, maybe these positions, whatever. You might then make some adjustments on the size of the squad and who do you want to trim, who do you want to let go, and whatever it may be. But I just think in terms of player profile, in terms of just squad management, in terms of who goes in and out, it really makes a zero to no sense to sign players now under one regime, only for another regime to come in. That player maybe doesn't kick off as best as possible. They get blamed. They get all the they get all the blame, especially if another player comes in from the new regime that does well, and then suddenly you're hounding them out and you can't get them out of the club. That's something we've been guilty of from the past. We always sign players on these big inflated wages and then when they don't have good seasons we find it very difficult to let them go because no one else is going to pay them that money and if you believe the rumors out there the story is that Mason Mount's getting up to like £220,000 a week. I don't think any other club in the world would pay Mason Mount that money. I don't think any other club in the world would have paid Chelsea £60 million for a player who probably isn't worth more than £40 in my humble opinion. So we're in a really, really messed up position now where I think we've essentially been fleeced. We've been fleeced. We've been run a mocker. We have negotiators that don't really know what they're doing. They always overpay. If I remember correctly, I read somewhere that Mason Mount had one year left on his contract. So to be paying 60 million for a player who's got one year left on his contract is insane to me. Um, even if he's just worth a 40 million pound player, that means if you had actually decent negotiators and you actually knew what you were doing, or if the club that was bidding for him wasn't Man United, maybe they could have got him for 30 mil, even 20 million, because he's got one year left in his contract. But we, of course, had to pay them 60. And it's pretty impressive for Chelsea anyway, because they've somehow managed to get rid of Kai Havertz and Mason Mount for a combined fee of like, what, more than 100 million or something. That's pretty insane when you think both of those players are you know both on the decline i would say um both players who a lot of chelsea fans would say were at the center of some of their worst performances personally for me i would say that so the mason mount maybe of a few years ago isn't a mason mount we're getting now and i honestly don't think he's that much of an upgrade to christian erickson 
I know a lot of fans out there, United fans specifically, don't like Christian Eriksen. They think he's too slow, which I obviously agree with. He maybe isn't at his former powers, but I think still on the ball, in a decent enough team with runners around him, he can still do something. But I honestly don't think Mason Mount is that big of an upgrade. I don't think it's a big enough upgrade to kind of bench him. Although I'm sure because Eric Ten Hag has purchased him and because their story is coming out now that Eric Ten Hag originally wanted um, Mason Mount to sign for Ajax when he was managing there before I think he went to Derby or something. I think Mason Mount may have may went on loan to the Dutch club, I'm not really too sure. But Eric Ten Hag has been a fan of him forever. So it's not just a random signing out of the blue. So maybe Eric Ten Hag sees something in him and that we don't as fans. But I honestly don't think we should be signing any players. Like I said, categorically until the sale and takeover of the club has been finalized no player should leave or to or should be signed that's just my humble opinion i just don't think it makes sense especially where we're in the final rounds or wrapping up the sale allegedly to be signing players under one regime when you're just going to be under a new regime soon and it's going to put that player under unnecessary stress they might come in other ideas blah 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 it doesn't make any sense to me number two i also don't rate him and i think there are better or more per pernient um you know, positions in the squad and the team that need to be addressed. Up front, we still need a striker. I would go as far as saying we probably need to sell Mason Mount, sorry, Martial before we even sign a Mason Mount. We need a striker to, to replace him, maybe even two, especially Weghorst leaving. We need probably a solid enough cover for Casemiro at the back because that's the one position that we have zero cover for him because we don't trust Fred. McTominay can't play that position even though he's big and strong and whatnot. And clearly, Eric Ten Hag doesn't want to play, um, what's his name? doesn't want to play the butcher there in any way shape or form either so we need a player who can come and slot in at that position we probably need an upgrade on on fullback too in both positions whether it's right back or left back i don't still trust luke shaw i think he's still going to do what he does to us always gets a new contract after playing good for one half of one season and then starts going back to what he usually plays like before so he's a player that shouldn't be there then you got the david de Gea situation we allegedly gave him a new contract then rescinded it because we weren't sure if we wanted him like all these players i think positions need to get addressed before we sign a mason mount but we did it anyway because we're man united because mason mount is a marquee english player he's allegedly being signed on the new media pr ownership so it makes complete sense in that regard but i personally don't like the transfer i think it stinks i think it's horrible um and if anything it's another clear sign that our owners don't know what they're doing because of all the position that we need to address, I don't think a number eight, a number 10, whatever position that he plays is really paramount. I don't think he's that big of an upgrade from what we already have in terms of Christian Eriksen, even a Bruno Fernandes. I don't think he's that big of an upgrade for those type of guys. And really and truly, he's not going to be a difference maker that's going to take us from where we finished last season to maybe challenging for a league or challenging for some more domestic trophies. I don't think that's going to happen. Personally, my humble opinion. And the flipping salary that he's getting is wild because because if he has a couple of dodgy seasons, I don't see how we're going to get rid of him, who we get rid of him for, and who he basically goes to signs with. I know it's fair because he's a, you know, it's not fair because he's an English player, so he's going to find a club. But we've essentially hung strung ourselves into a very long deal and agreement with this kid because you most likely he's not going to have another big move after this, if you think about it. This is probably his one and only big move. Hence why we're probably playing the inflated players we're playing and giving him the crazy amounts of wages. But I guess we have to wait and see in this one. I don't want to break my head about it too much because it makes me super upset. And we're just going to have to hope and pray for the United fans that we get this sorted. But it's not looking good. It's not looking good at all. It's not looking good at all.